but the debt to GDP ratio at 34% is still low compared to other countries in Africa. And that is absolutely correct. But no one pays their debt using GDP. Debt is paid using revenue, and Nigeria's revenues have been declining. Nigeria earns revenue today to serve its debt and not to grow. The place to start, therefore, is to remove the inefficient fuel subsidies. Nigerian fuel subsidies benefit the rich, not the poor. Fueling theirs and government's endless fleet of cars at the expense of the poor. Estimates show that the poorest 40% of the population consume just 3% of petrol. Fuel subsidies are killing the Nigerian economy, costing the economy of Nigeria $10 billion alone in 2022. Now that means that Nigeria is borrowing what it doesn't have to borrow for. If it simply eliminates these inefficient subsidies and uses the resources well for national development. Rather, support should be provided to private sector refineries and modular refineries to allow for efficiency and competitiveness to drive down fuel pump prices. The newly commissioned Dangote refinery, by your excellency, Mr. President, the largest single train petroleum refinery in the world, as well as the petrochemical complex, will revolutionize Nigeria's economy. And congratulations to you, Mr. President. I'll also like to give congratulations to my dear brother, Aliko Dangote, for his amazing $19 billion investment. You've got Nigerians, Mr. President, who believe in Nigeria. He's one of them. I am one of them. And we are many of us. We believe in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, there's also an urgent need to look at the cost of governance. The cost of governance in Nigeria is way too high and should be drastically reduced to free up more resources for development. Nigeria is spending very little on development. Today, Nigeria is ranked among the countries with the lowest human capital development index in the world, with a rank of 167 among 174 countries globally, according to the World Bank 2022 Public Expenditure Review Report. To meet Nigeria's massive infrastructure needs, according to this report, we require $3 trillion by 2050. According to the report, at the current rate, it will take 300 years to provide the minimum level of infrastructure needed for Nigeria's development. All living Nigerians today and many generations to come will be long gone by then. We must therefore change this and change it decisively. Nigeria must rely more on the private sector for infrastructure development to reduce the fiscal burdens on the shoulders of government. Your Excellencies, much can be done to raise tax revenue, as tax to GDP ratio in Nigeria is still low. This must include improving tax collection, tax administration, but moving from tax exemption to tax redemption, ensuring that multinational companies pay appropriate royalties and taxes and that leakages in tax collection are closed. However, simply raising taxes is not enough, as many question the value of paying taxes, hence a high level of tax avoidance. Many citizens provide their own electricity, sink their own boreholes to get access to water, repair their roads in their neighborhoods and in their towns. These are essentially high implicit taxes. Nigerians, therefore, today pay the highest implicit taxes in the world. Governments need to ensure effective social contracts by delivering quality public services. It is not the amount collected, it is how it is spent and what it's delivered. Nations that grow better, they run effective governments that assure social contracts with their citizens. Your Excellencies, we must rebalance the structure and performance of the economy. A very common refrain in Nigeria with every successful, successive government is, we need to diversify the economy. 